Some say I'm an artist, others a mathematician. My name is Rhea Ave Elcock. I'm an Afro-Caribbean American who has an affinity for the ocean. I love art, nature, singing, and most of all, problems. Yes, I said problems. As crazy as this may sound, problems are my coffee in the morning. It's what keeps me going throughout my day, and it has everything to do with my purpose. So as far as who do I think that I am? Well, I consider myself to be a creative problem solver. It's funny, as an educator at a high school, when I tell my students about myself, they often ask me why in the world I chose math. And when I tell them it's my joy, my passion, they normally respond by saying, I hate math, math is awful, or my personal favorite, ew. But I mean, who can blame them? For most, math has been these vague set of equations that seem to have no relevancy in the real world. In school, it was those side angle side proofs we did in geometry that seemed to serve us no purpose in life because remind me again how the Pythagorean theorem has ever helped me budget for groceries this month? However, outside of those who may dislike math, it does serve a purpose. I mean, for accountants, it's the tools they use to keep their businesses afloat, to increase their profits. For physicists, it's the lens they use to measure the current generated by photons to power our solar panels. For mathematicians, it's this beautiful discourse that intertwines logic, object, and numbers to give them a better understanding of this world. And well, for a creative problem solver like me, it is my gateway and my foundation to solving some of the world's biggest problems like climate change, poverty, and racism. That's why it honestly breaks my heart when I hear my students say these five following words. Are you ready? I am bad at math. You might imagine that I hear these words quite often, because I do. But it breaks my heart because I'm a firm believer nobody is bad at math. We just express mathematics differently. However, when I tell my students that, they say, no, miss, I am bad at math. No matter how you express it, you can ask my past teachers or look at my past grades. But I'm a firm believer nobody is bad at math, and who here may believe that they are bad at math? OK. But let me challenge you for a second. Richard Corrant, a mathematician, once described mathematics as an expression of the human mind that reflects the active will, the contemplative reason, and the desire for aesthetic perfection. Its basic elements are logic and intuition, analysis and construction, generality and individuality. You see, every artist has their idea of a perfect painting in which they express their individuality. Every poet, the perfect stanza in which they express the perfect construction. Everyone at some point has the desire for aesthetic perfection in which they express mathematics' basic elements. Therefore, everyone in some way is a mathematician, right? But of course, there's more to math than just perfection. It's also about failure, confusion, frustration, all of which I'm sure we are familiar with dealing with mathematics. I cannot tell you how many times I sat in my abstract algebra class beyond confused and frustrated, and how many times I felt like giving up. Yet if you were to ask any one of my professors if my confusion or failure discredited my ability to do mathematics, they would say no. Because although I didn't understand, I kept trying to eventually yield an answer that I'm still in the process of understanding. And that's truly what mathematics is all about. Paul Lockhart, a mathematician, once said, to do mathematics is to engage in an act of discovery and conjecture, intuition and inspiration, to be in a state of confusion. Not because it makes no sense to you, but because you gave it sense, and you still do not understand what your creation is up to. You see, math is about trying new methods, new ways of thoughts to eventually yield an answer where you find something not only about yourself, but about the solution you just found and then giving it meaning. And I know, quite honestly, we all have the ability to do just that because we do it in our craft daily. Therefore, it's time to do away with the stigma that math is for a select few who understand these complex equations because it's so much more. It's about failure, perfection, confusion, and sometimes even creation. Now, every once in a while, I do meet someone as odd as me who enjoys mathematics, and when we talk about it, 
They normally say, I was good at math, but realized there was nothing you could do with it. This by far is my favorite response, because what can you not do with math? But to be fair, I was once naive and thought the only thing you could do with a math degree was become a teacher, and I thought there were more pressing problems in this world than adding one plus one all day. But now I like to tell people, if you could add one plus one, you could solve cancer. As absurd as this may sound, let me put some things in perspective for you. Right now, insects are dying at an alarming rate. Bees are on the verge of extinction. Our grandchildren will likely never see a giraffe or a cheetah except for in the history books. The rich are getting richer, monopolizing what they can, and the poor even poorer. California is in a drought, and there is an increase in wildfires, while hurricanes and natural disasters are occurring more frequently at a disastrous rate. Over half of the adults under the age of 65 will be diagnosed with cancer, and by 2050, bacteria's resistance to antibiotics will kill more people than cancer itself. Black and brown bodies are disproportionately being affected by our governing system, while little is being done to protect them. And religious spaces, schools, festivals, clubs, even Walmarts are no longer safe due to the increase in mass shootings. Now in everything that I listed, everything that I just shared, they have one thing in common. They're all problems. And mathematics, it's a discourse that entails what? Here's a hint, it's a lot of problems. Now, some of you may be thinking, I hope she's not insinuating you could use math to solve something as complex as anti-black racism, right? But I am. So let me prove to you just how math can be used to solve something as complex as racism. But first, Dr. Kyra Shaheed, author of Anti-Black Racism and Epistemic Violence, defines anti-black racism as a socially complex term that refers to the belief that all people of African descent possesses characteristics that distinguishes them as inferior, especially but not exclusively to persons labeled as white. Anti-black racism can be seen through mass incarceration, redlining, problems currently presenting itself within America today. So the other day, my partner Amir Davis and I tried to create an equation that would encapsulate what our current state looks like with anti-black racism, but would also reflect if it didn't, if unity exists. And here's what we came up with. Now, I know what you may be thinking. These symbols are complicated, I don't understand. But it's not the symbols that matter. What matters here is that everything has a value. Love, diversity, dissonance, inclusion, ignorance, it's all a value. And in our current state where racism exists, unity is fractional, if not approaching zero. It of course would be unfair of me to say that unity is zero because there are times like the passing of a prominent figure or even a natural disaster where we find our ways to put our differences aside. But for the most part, unity is slim because ultimately we have little love for our neighbor, no compassion and ignorance is far greater than our diversity and inclusion. So what do we do to increase our unity? PEMDAS. Let's start within the parentheses. The first step is to increase our diversity because here's a spoiler alert, no matter how hard we try to get rid of black people, Muslims, the LGBTQ community, really anyone different than us, they will still exist. And more often than not, they will develop a resilience to our pushback. So it's about time we accept those who are different than us because ultimately it's our differences that are the necessary variable the key ingredient for us to becoming one. Without diversity, there's no inclusion. And without inclusion, ignorance is far greater than the two. So we must do everything we can to expose ourselves to others. And when we do just that, we must also increase inclusion. Because inclusion is the true act of diversity. When we include those who are different than us, when we include their history in our curriculum because black history is your history, we include their current circumstances in our decision making, their past pain and our trauma in our journey towards reconciliation. And now that we have increased diversity and inclusion, those values should be far greater than ignorance so that ignorance doesn't overpower the two. When we intentionally expose our hearts and our minds to those who are different than us, then we no longer remain unaware of the scars of our neighbor. We no longer ridicule, we begin to understand. And so now we have dealt with the easier part of things. 
it's time to get our hands a little messy and deal with the hardest part of this equation, and that is dissonance. In a world full of different minds, talents, opinions, races, genders, backgrounds, disagreement and clashing, it's inevitable. However, when we continue to foster a world where we systemically oppress and reject others for fear of our own survival, we only approach a world with more dissonance and unity no longer exists. Therefore, we must do everything we can to decrease that dissonance so it no longer creates a divide. And this exactly is where humility comes into play. Right now, as individuals, we believe we know what's best. We believe we have all the answers, which is why there's a need for humility. Because my thoughts are not higher than yours, yours are not higher than your neighbors. When we recognize that no one person is greater than the other, and that my opinions and values are just as important as yours, our puzzle pieces can slowly find its way to piece itself together and approach a world with unity. And then we sum it all up. Once we have increased diversity and inclusion, decreased ignorance and dissonance, and added just a smidge of humility, we must multiply it all by love. And not just by a small amount, but we must multiply it exponentially. Our love must grow at an increasing rate day by day so that when dissonance does overpower diversity and inclusion, we can combat that with our ability to love one another. Just as Martin Luther King Jr. once said, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Our love has the power to drive out hate when dissonance overpowers it. It has the power to break down walls instead of building them. It has the power to be the voice for the voiceless, the strength for the weak. Love is the glue that keeps these puzzle pieces intact when trials and tribulations face it. Love is the most important value in this equation. And friends, that's exactly how you use math to solve something like racism. So when my students tell me that they are not capable of doing math, I tell them, you do it every day. You add on to who and what you want to contribute to your being daily. You subtract those who give you less value, those who give you are toxic. And when people tell me that the world has nothing to do with mathematics, that the biggest problems can't solve it, I say, think again. Math has everything to do with the biggest problems. To solve our world's biggest problems, we need to add on to the minds of what we have, divide tasks among each other, find our differences and accept our greatest similarities. That is you using math. We need to understand that ultimately we are all puzzle pieces in this thing that creates this earth. And in this puzzle, everybody has a space that fits uniquely to them. Whether you are an accountant, a CEO, a shoe cleaner, a salesman, a student, a teacher, no matter your occupation, your sexual orientation or religious belief, you have a part to play in solving some of the world's biggest problems. So let us add on to the minds of what we have. Let us increase our diversity and inclusion, decrease ignorance and dissonance, and add just a smidge of humility to later multiply it all by love and eventually receive a sum that will change our world. That is the equation for merging our minds into becoming one. Thank you.